We're here to organize the world's information and to make it universally accessible and usable. That's Google's purpose, which has held it in good stead for many years. This is Walking Your Talk, a personal development podcast about leadership, authenticity, and courage. I'm Carolyn Taylor, and I've spent my life working with leaders in organizations on how to change their culture. But this is much more personal. If you want to be known as someone who walks your talk at work and beyond, then this podcast is for you. That's Google's purpose from a long way back. I had a privilege to work at Google as a consultant in the mid 2000s, 2006, 2007, and to see firsthand how that purpose and the spirit and the drive and the meaning behind it absolutely dominated the organization. Here was a people who were living in Palo Alto, Mountain View, California, believing and knowing that they were changing the world. And it was absolutely thrilling. Yes, many of them were becoming millionaires on the way through. Yes, they were somewhat arrogant in the process. Yes, if you actually wanted to try and talk to a person at Google because your name had dropped down on the list, it was extremely hard. But oh my goodness, were they making a difference. And the whole of Silicon Valley at that stage was filled with that kind of purpose-led, purposeful, meaningful, motivating drive. Now, the wording of Google's purpose statement to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. I mean, I've seen hundreds of purpose statements which are worded either slightly better or slightly worse than that. So obviously it became clear to me that it's not just in the words. It's about what you do with those words that really make a difference. Some organizations today talk about themselves as being truly purpose-led And they use that as the basis of all of their strategy, all their employee engagement efforts, their alignment of their culture to support that intention. And I've seen it in many places where the purpose statement is not much more than lip service. Parroting words and ensuring that every sentence or at least every social media post contains that purpose. As we all know, that's not going to do it. But I've seen others where it really does drive everything. I had the privilege of sharing a stage recently with the head of HR for Mars Pet Foods. Their purpose is to make a better world for pets. I was smiling already. Now, obviously, they make pet food, but they also campaign to have pets allowed in more places. They moved into new product lines, into veterinary services, They allow you to test your pet at home for various ailments, etc. Every employee can, of course, course, bring their pet to work. But more than any of that, they're united in their love of pets and that their belief that we are all privileged to have our pets in our lives and that pets do really make the world a better place. So there's a joyousness with which they talk about all that, which is so engaging and so motivated. And I was mightily inspired. So I thought of them as I was putting together this podcast, which is going to be about how you build a purpose for an organization or for a team, or if your organization already has a purpose, and many of them do now, They may call it a mission statement, by the way. I wouldn't get too hang up on that as to the difference between a mission statement and a purpose. There probably is some detailed definition with a slight distinction, but I find that organizations mix them quite a lot. But if your organization already has a purpose, it may or may not be doing for you and for your team everything that that it could be doing. So I'm convinced that working for a higher purpose Working to make the world a better place in some way is what I want to do, but I think it's what all of us want to do, because I think it does give us that warm glow, that feeling that we're doing something meaningful. So how do you create that? I think the place to start is with the ultimate benefit or the ultimate good that your team or your organization can contribute to the world. 
So if you're in HR, people want the right talent with the right motivation, with the right location, right behavior, right skills, when they're needed to support the strategy. Everything else that you do is in support of that. Performance management system is in support of that. Engagement surveys are in support of that. Culture is in support of that. Ultimately, what people want from HR is they want great people ready now to do the jobs they have them to do. So that then becomes potentially a purpose. If you're in financial services, I think ultimately what people want is they want more money. We want to feel more financially secure. That's in the end what I'm looking for from my bank. All the stuff about interest rates and services and this and that and the other, it's all leading to something which is an ultimate goal for me, which is I'd like to have more money. If I'm sick, I want to be well. So anything to do with the healthcare in the end has got to be about making me well. And yet one of the curious things about many of these purposes, if you think about them, is that if they are ultimately fulfilled, there is perhaps a fear that you will no longer lead me. So let me give you a personal example here. Many of the clients I work with want cultures that will support their strategy. They want their people to behave in ways that are customer-centric, highly accountable, thinking enterprise, being innovative, supporting each other, etc., etc. That's what they want. Now, when they achieve that, and if we've helped them to achieve that, there comes a point where perhaps they don't need us anymore. And I think this is one of the dilemmas of actually setting our purpose is that in setting it, we have to have the confidence that if we fulfill that purpose, there will always be more opportunities. There will be always be new things we can offer to a client. There will always be new clients to pursue. Because otherwise, we get into a situation where, in fact, us fulfilling a purpose for you means that you don't need me anymore. And then we're in a little bit of conflict with each other. To be truly purpose-led, your purpose has to come first. And then how you make money out of doing that and keep yourself employed is relevant, but it's the second question. Because as I said in a previous podcast, when you are truly purpose-led, you always can move from place to place in order to find different ways to fulfill that purpose. But if you start your purpose by going, how can we make money here? Somehow the whole thing gets a little bit twisted around. So if your team or your organization doesn't have a purpose... And the question to answer is, what is the contribution that we are uniquely placed to offer that will make our potential customers and their lives immeasurably better? Sit as a team and ask that over and over again. And each time you come up with an answer, ask, as a result of that contribution, what would it then be possible for these people to do and achieve? Because this will help you to go deeper and find a more expansive purpose than the one that you might first of all have thought of. And so your purpose then leads to many of the cultural aspirations we've been talking about in these podcasts previously. Customer centricity, for example, because you need to be close to customers to know whether or not your purpose is actually fulfilling what it is they're looking for. Empowerment, because it will allow your people to then be free and to operate within the guidelines of this purpose. Accountability, because once everybody is clear on what the purpose is, then we all have to commit to delivering on it. And simplicity, because purpose is the great prioritization setter. It really does allow you to stay focused on what it is that you need to do. But as I learned from the Mars pet food teams, it all starts with purpose. It gives meaning, it gives motivation, it gives engagement. It gives direction and prioritization. It really is a cause worth pursuing. So next week, given that being purpose-led has so many benefits, I want to explore why so few teams and organizations, and indeed individuals, actually do get this right. What is it that distracts us from being purpose-led, and what can you do about it? So I'll see you then. Thank you so much for joining me.